Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Wine Cast. This is the first of a series of mini casts that I'll be doing on specific grape varietals designed to get you some information about the histories and flavor characteristics of various grapes. I thought I'd start with Chardonnay because it's a common grape that most every wine consumer will have an opportunity to try at some point. Chardonnay is native to Burgundy in eastern France, and there's been suspicion for a long time that Chard was related to Pinot Noir, its major growing partner in those parts. Genetic analysis confirmed this, and it's now known that Chardonnay is the product of a cross between Pinot Noir, another Burgundy native, and a thoroughly undistinguished and unexciting grape that was brought by the Romans to France from Croatia, Gouet Blanc. Pinot and Gouet Blanc were a busy pair of varietals, it seems, because they also produced at least 15 other crosses, some of which are impressive players in French wine, such as Aligoté, Auxerrois, Gamay, and Melon. Where can you find Chardonnay? Well, just about everywhere these days, with Chardonnay having become the poster child for the very concept of an international variety. According to the most recent worldwide census of planted varietals conducted by the University of Adelaide in 2010, Chardonnay is the second most widely planted white grape in the world, second only to Spain's Irene, um, that's used mostly for making brandy, and the fifth most planted grape overall. So you actually might have trouble throwing a rock in some wine regions and not hitting a cluster of Chard. The biggest plantings, though, are in France, specifically in the Burgundy region, including Chablis, there are also important plantings in the United States, especially in California, and in Australia as well. A special mention should go to Champagne in France, where it's one of the three main grapes of seven permitted grapes that can be used in making Champagne. And it also turns up in other regions of the world where there's an attempt to make sparkling wine in imitation of Champagne. What does Chardonnay taste like? That's a tricky question to answer because part of Chard's success as an international grape has been because it's a grape that's very sensitive to the external effects when developing its flavors and other characteristics. In particular, it's sensitive to the climate it's grown in, the oak treatment it does or doesn't receive, and whether or not it undergoes a process called malolactic fermentation. Let's have a look at each of these. A Chardonnay grown in a cool climate like Chablis in France, or even the Carneros VA in California, will tend to express itself as a light to medium bodied wine with noticeable acidity. The flavor profile will be about green apples and tart pears and often have pronounced minerality. And especially in a place like Chablis, a quality that can often be described as gunflint. In warmer climes, say most of Burgundy apart from Chablis, Oregon State and moderate parts of California and Australia, both the body and the acidity tend toward medium, though you can still get some nice crisp examples of acid on the palate. The fruit begins to move towards citrus and melon, and you may get notes of pineapple as the palate begins to slide toward tropical fruits under the influence of the temperature. In truly warm areas, primarily the warmest parts of California and Australia, the body and the acidity both tend not to stray too far from medium, and the fruit expresses vigorously as tropical, with mango and guava flavors frequently reported, and even denser flavors like fig showing up occasionally. The next axis affecting a shard's personality is the oak treatment. Oak brings flavors like vanilla and spice, especially cloves, to the table, and depending on whether and to what degree the oak has been charred or toasted, caramel and smoke. If you ask a winemaker how much oak his or her wine has, which is a good question to ask, you'll often get the answer expressed as a percentage. You could hear anything from 100% new French oak to 50% new and 50% neutral American oak and, and, and so on. There are a ton of variations, but what the winemaker or the label will be trying to express to you is pretty intuitive, so you should catch on pretty quickly. You may see the term unoaked on the label, and this unregulated term usually means that the winemaker aged the wine in tanks made out of stainless steel or some other non-oak medium, like concrete, for example. But since it's unregulated, a winemaker could use this term to mean that the wine was aged in neutral oak barrels, that is, barrels that have been used so frequently that they've been leached dry of the flavor compounds that oak would normally contribute. Finally, malolactic fermentation is something that you hear about quite a lot when talking about Chardonnay. 
It goes by several names or nicknames, and it really should be called malolactic conversion because it's not a true fermentation, but a process by which bacteria convert the main acid in wine, malic acid, into lactic acid, which has less tartness and acidity than malic acid does. Virtually all red wines go through this process, and some white wines can also benefit from it, including Chardonnay. What you end up with is a wine with a softer, rounder, creamier mouthfeel because of the diminished acidity. The process also creates a compound called diacetyl that gives buttery or popcorn-like aromas to the wine. This compound is largely responsible for the famous California Chardonnay butter bombs that are thankfully becoming rarer and rarer. How buttery the shard ends up being will have to do with how thoroughly the wine went through malolactic fermentation. And a good question to ask a producer is, how much mallow? You might get 100% or full malolactic fermentation as your answer. Or you might get a percentage or just a statement that the mallow was partial. Either of these answers will help you make better choices about the shards that you buy. So since Chardonnays come in such a variety of styles and profiles, the trick to finding one that you like is getting as much information as you can before buying. What's the best way to do that? Well, information about climate can be inferred from any geographical indications on the label and a little bit of research about wine regions. If the geographical information is very broad, say the bottle only says that this is a California Chardonnay and nothing else, assume that most of the grapes are coming from the warmer parts of the region that's given. Some producers will put information about oak treatment on the label, sometimes fairly specific information even. But a lot of times the label won't say anything at all about oak, and you'll need to ask either the producer, a store employee, or just do some research online. In a pinch, you can sometimes make inferences from the shelf talkers or the little tags on the shelves that try to describe the wine to you in order to entice you to buy it. Look for words like vanilla, toast, and caramel to give you a clue about whether there's some oak there and maybe even how much. Unoaked on a bottle suggests that you aren't likely to taste the effects of oak, even if it may have been aged in neutral oak barrels. But if you have the opportunity, it never hurts to get more information about what the producer means by what she puts on the label. Lastly, you will definitely need to ask about malolactic fermentation, and good luck to you, as this is a very specific piece of technical data. And unless you're talking to the winemaker or a very knowledgeable tasting room employee, you're unlikely to find someone who's going to know much about it. Online research could be helpful, but no guarantees there. So just know that you may have to take a risk when it comes to the butter factor. Well, that's this cast. I hope it was helpful and look for more of these interspersed among longer casts about general wine topics. I did this cast at the request of a subscriber, so a big shout out to Swapnel Sabnis for the suggestion and an even bigger apology if I failed to pronounce your name properly. I'm your host, The Unknown Winecaster, and I'm out. Please enjoy the grape and please enjoy it responsibly.